Hello, this is Nelson Olmstead with the history of Oregon's oldest family home. First, a word from Clint Gruber, our spokesman from Pacific Power. Welcome once again to Stories of Pacific Powerland, a presentation of Pacific Power and Light, the company that has been serving the electric needs of the region's homes, farms, and industries through more than half a century of progress and growth. Now, back to Nelson and today's story. She was the first bride in the Rogue River Valley, attractive, vivacious Clarissa Birdsey, and her young husband, David, filed a donation land claim on a timbered site bordering the Rogue River. It was remote and lonely, to be sure, but beautiful, too, a place of great peace and tranquility. And David said, Now, <clears throat> we could build with logs like most of the folks around these parts, and that would be the easiest way, but a log house isn't good enough for us. I want to build something that'll last. And so, during the year of 1856, David Birdsey labored to make his home sturdy, pleasant, and comfortable. New trails were staked through the country, and one such trail crossed the Rogue River a few miles downstream from the Birdsey place, where there was a relatively easy spot to ford the river. A small community grew up on the site and acquired the amusing name of Tail Holt. The title was prompted by the practice of travelers holding to the tails of their horses or mules while fording the swift-running rogue. That community today is the prosperous town of Rogue River. As David Birdsey had promised, his new house became a showplace of the area. Clarissa had an eye for pretty things. And one day, he arrived home with a very unusual burden loaded on pack mules. He called out, Clarissa, come out here. See what I brought you. It's a real first-class piano. See, solid mahogany. I bought it from Major Glenn, especially for the best wife a man ever had. But life on the southern Oregon frontier was not always a pleasant adventure. Oftentimes, there were troubles aplenty. One grizzled old-timer said to David Birdsey, Well, these here rogue engines is the most uncooperative bunch I ever did see. Appears like we'll have to kill them all before we can settle this valley. Well, if there's going to be some real shooting... Round up the people and bring them to my house. It's the stoutest place in the valley, and we can hold off an attack for days. So, the Birdsey home became Fort Birdsey during the period of violence known as the Rogue Indian Wars. General Joseph Lane mapped many of his southern Oregon Indian campaigns from his temporary headquarters at Fort Birdsey. After the Indian Wars, and over the years, the gracious house acquired the character bestowed by happy family living. The second generation, Victor Birdsey and his wife Effie, raised their family in the home. And then in 1948, when the Birdsey home lacked just six years of being one century old, Effie Birdsey won an award. When the sponsors of this contest wanted to know what she needed most, the question required very little thought. She had been making do in the family home for many years with tools and utensils nearly 100 years old. And she told the man that what she really needed was a new wood stove. And so the historic Birdsey home near Rogue River, Oregon, still carries on as the oldest family home in the state, complete with Clarissa Birdsey's mahogany square grand piano, Effie Birdsey's new wood stove, and the tradition of three generations of Birdsey's standing firmly behind it. Thanks, Nelson. 